All right. Hi, Patrick. Hi. Thanks for sitting down with us to discuss your movie, The Overnight. Um, it comes out today, which is June 26th. Six. Thank you. <laughs> Fuzzy mind. I'll tell him whenever. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. um, I was wondering if you could just explain a little bit about your background. I know you um, you were last year at South by Southwest with Creep, um, yeah. who my boss, Spencer, saw that movie, so I haven't. Um, so can you tell us, like, your transition from doing Creep into doing this movie. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I made Creep with Mark Duplass, uh, who's one of my closest friends and uh, my producer, essentially. Uh, that was a really crazy experience, because this is a movie that essentially was just Mark, me, and a movie camera. Okay. And we, we made it with no crew. I mean, later on, our editor, co-producer, Chris Donlin, got involved in this intrinsic part of that movie but other than that it was essentially just Mark and I kind of making this experiment of a movie mm -hmm. um, and luckily enough we were able to turn it into something that people wanted to see and was you know got into South by Southwest which was hugely hugely validating yeah that. Um, and then so the overnight kind of came out of uh, getting to the end of creep and wanting to make something else and Mark basically said if I wrote something that could kind of be made in his low budget model mm -hmm. the same way in which he made the one I love and your sister's sister uh, that he would produce it for me so I went off and wrote this this script with you know with that in mind yeah. kind of, these kind of budgetary constraints yeah. almost in mind you know and then trying to think about you know only having a certain set of tools and then how do I um, you know shine a light on that and make it seem make it seem bigger than it actually yeah. is. Um, can you talk about a little about the cast name? Because this is a pretty impressive cast for such a, a low budget film. Um, uh, you know, you got Taylor Schilling, Adam Scott, Jason Schwartzman, and Judith, I don't know how to say her French last name, um, <laughs> who I just looked her up. I was like, she looks really familiar. Yeah. It was the man from the Iron Mask as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's funny. She was in that, and then she was in this film, Ridicule, that was kind of a bigger Miramax movie in the 90s. And, um, I mean, she's like, she's pretty big in France. Mm -hmm. you know, she's worked with like every big French director. And so it was great being able to work with someone like that who's like not that well known here, but is incredibly talented and smart and like, you know, really um, brought a lot as a collaborator. Yeah. Um, no, it was, I mean, it was a dream getting this cast involved. I think having Mark on as our producer was a yeah. huge help for that. You yeah. Know, I think he's got a good track record when it comes to this stuff. And so, um, Adam and Naomi, Adam and Naomi Scott were actually the first people to come on board. Adam is a performer and producer, and yeah. Naomi is a, as our kind of like main day to day producer. Oh, and nice. She's kind of my my you know my, my my closest collaborator on the movie was was you know and continues to be um, as we as we go through you know actually getting the movie out. Yeah. The world. Um, she's the person I talk to every day the most outside of my wife. <laughs> um, so. Uh, so yeah, having them jump on board and then and then Taylor and Taylor was someone that we didn't think we'd be able to get, and so we kind of sent her the script as, as a hail mary pass almost, yeah. and having her say yes was just hugely validating. For yeah, me. Um, so I'm a big fan of her of her of her show, um, and then finally Jason just came in last minute just um, to kind of save the day. Yeah, just brought brought his A game. For yeah. Sure. I mean, since it's such a low-budget film, what was your shooting schedule like? We shot in 12 days. Okay. So, I mean, that is somewhat nice for a larger actor coming into a small project in a small amount of time, mm -hmm. knock it out. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, especially when, like, like, I think Taylor is shooting her show yeah. maybe 75% of the year. Like, oh, uh, jeez. Yeah. So she is, you know, she's she's super busy and focusing on one, one character and one thing, so... I think for her, it was exciting to be able to like dip in and play and, yeah. and then get out of there. For yeah. Sure. But the, I mean, those two weeks were the only two weeks that these guys were all available at mm -hmm. the same time. It was, it's so funny how, you know, a lot of the creative choices you make ends up coming down to like scheduling. It's <laughs> like my and scheduling yeah. then affects, you know, the whole like uh, creative flow of your movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
This definitely is uh, an L.A. film. I mean, um, not that we don't have people here in Dallas that probably fit that same description. Oh, but they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> they're everywhere. I mean, this is just L.A. because maybe that was an easy target. That's what sure. I mean, you didn't really, I mean, shy away from anything. You got assholes and penises and, oh, yeah. you know, menage a trois and blowjobs and all that good stuff. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> As Josh is laughing in the corner, um, I mean, you. I mean, it's funny, but it's definitely not something that you shied away with. But like I already said, yeah, yeah, no, it's a cornucopia of all that stuff for <laughs> sure. It's a cornucopia of, of, of just, of just my, 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 my mind. Uh, <laughs> No, it's it's yeah. It was it was it was a lot of fun to write. I mean, I yeah. cracked myself up writing it for sure. Yeah. Uh, it was really fun to show it to my wife and have her <laughs> kind of look at it and say, "You are not going to make this. Movie. What are you doing, buddy?" And, uh, and then have her actually enjoy it. When yeah. The movie's over. Did know? anyone ever say like that's so absurd? You have to change that. No. Okay. No. And <laughs> that's a dangerous thing. <laughs> Because I'm just going to take it and run with it. You know, like, this is my, in this is my instinct, you know, is to, is to, is to push things as far as I can take them. So, yeah. Uh, if anything, it was great because working with these actors who have just, you know, done so much stuff and are so smart, like, they were able to take a lot of these ideas and make them feel real in a way that mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting. Yeah. You know, and really be able to, like, dance in some cases, literally, but also yeah. you know, dance between the like the crazier stuff and yeah. the stuff that's a little more grounded, real feeling. Yeah, I mean, who painted the asshole paintings? Like, yeah, those were our production designer, oh, okay, uh, Teresa Gulsarian. <laughs> she's, uh, you know, she and she's great because she's like, I mean, she's like a sister to me, and yeah. uh, she uh, had hired someone to paint them, and they fell through, so yeah. she had to paint thirty butthole paintings. <laughs> And, there were three, yeah. and like in like eleven hours, or something. <laughs> so that should, I feel like that should be like a contest on like on a show or like something. <laughs> like, like it's it's it was an endurance test yeah. and a creativity test for sure. But yeah, I couldn't I couldn't be happier with that with how they look. <laughs> she killed it. I mean, what are your hopes for? I mean, this is a very small film, but it's definitely getting a lot of airplay and as far as publicity wise. So I mean, you know, you start out this very small film with some great cast and you know great direction and everything and great script. I mean, where do you would you like this to run? You know, forever. I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. No, I think, you know, it is, I mean, it, it was small in terms of how we made it, but yeah. I, think, uh, I think, I just, I don't know, I think the movie's super entertaining. I think yeah. it's something where I don't feel like, uh, you know, like it's something that is an issue for me just as a film goer is I don't like it when I feel like my time's being wasted, you know, like if you go watch a movie in a movie theater that's two and a half hours long that should have been an hour and a half long, yeah. you know, it, it, uh, this movie's super short. Oh, it is. That's what I noticed when I first opened it. Right. Yeah. But it's also like, I feel like there's more bang for your buck within, yeah. within that time period, you know? Yeah. Um, I really wanted folks to feel like they were going on like a roller coaster ride with this yeah. people. So, you know, that, if, if that happens and if people enjoy it on that level and are able to, you know, just, just kind of get lost in the movie, that's my, my work is done. Yeah. Yeah. What else um, do you have coming up? We've got Creed, we've got Overnight. What's up next for yeah, you? Yeah, well, I'm going to take a long nap <laughs> uh, come like late July. I'm going to not, I'm, gonna, I'm going right back to just, just wearing sweatpants all day and writing. Oh, okay. That's my most, you know, that's, that's kind of my main mode when I'm not doing this. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, having both these movies come out on the same weekend is really great because it's just a chance to kind of yeah. uh, move forward a little bit because they've occupied my entire life for the last four years. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, um, would you want to move on to a bigger budget film or would, are you pretty comfortable in the low budget setting? Yeah, you know, I uh, since Sundance, some scripts have been getting sent my way, uh, you know, I'm excited to have more tools to play with. I think that's the main thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, my first movie, we had nothing. Yes. <laughs> you know, we were doing everything. Yeah. And so with this movie, 
basically each new, like even having a gaffer and having, you know, having someone, you know, someone there to, to, to make food. Like, <laughs> like I, like I felt every new role and it was yeah. just, and I was so grateful for each new person that came on board. And so I, you know, having nothing is really helpful to start out with. Cause then once you do have all these new tools at your disposal, mm -hmm. you're able to make a lot more deliberate choices with yeah. them. Cause you, you know, you, they, them even being there and existing is a new thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, the school I went to was super experimental, like art school that was really about kind of using the tools at hand and less about sort of like giving you a lot of money to make your thesis film or something, yeah. you know? So it was nice to start with nothing because then you, you just appreciate it little bit so much more I mean what what are you what do you use to kind of set yourself apart I mean LA is a super saturated film place I mean what yeah what exactly do you do you think your strengths are as I don't know I mean I think I'm kind of going with my gut in terms of what what content I'm putting out there you know I never did I think my first movie would be a found footage horror movie <laughs> Nor did I think my second film would be a sex comedy, yeah. but these were the opportunities that presented themselves at each moment. And so me saying yes to that and me just saying, yeah, I think I can make this work was enough for like, you know, it's like jumping into a cold swimming pool. Yeah. You know, you brace yourself, you know, it's going to be crazy, but once you get in there, you get used to the water yeah. and uh, hopefully can jump into a colder swimming pool. Yeah. And time. you're not pigeonholing yourself into one genre as yeah. well. You know, you've demonstrated you can do horror, you can do comedy. Yeah. And yeah. I, and, you know, I, I mean, I said this earlier today, but uh, like, uh, you know, so it's what's cool about filmmaking is you're allowed to be interested in everything. Yeah. You know, and you can, and you can really play in a lot of different, a lot of different sandboxes and so um, uh, the fact that both of these films have kind of you know they exist in different genres but both of them have been fairly well received within each genre and mm -hmm. feel like a new thing um, is just you know hugely validating and, and it goes back to that same thing of like at the, at the end of the day bottom line with so much content out there right now like you just got to make something that's engaging for an audience like I'm not interested in being a self-indulgent filmmaker like I don't need to like you know I, I mean I feel like I do put my soul into what yeah. I make but I don't need to like um, you know like uh, you know uh, corner anyone into you know you know experiencing my stuff yeah you know, I really want all these movies to kind of exist as as, as uh, inclusive pieces of pieces of art you know, yeah that, both of these movies kind of say come play with me you know yeah if you come if you meet the either the, either creep or the overnight on the level of the movie like there's a good chance you're going to have a good time yeah. yeah thanks so much patrick Thank you for so letting us know a little bit about your process and yeah. uh the films yeah, <laughs> Stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.